Hello. Oh my God, there's so much people here. Hi everybody. So my name is Paula Sierra. That's actually I've been presented just before, but my first name is kind of boring and everyone has it. And my second name is long and confusing, so I just go by Pote. Everybody calls me that. I hope you guys will too. Um, so, who am I? I'm, I'm a software engineer. I work at a company called CloudApp, which you might have heard of. I'm also a co-founder at a company called Modis. We do uh, monitoring and profiling for your Redis databases. You might be interested in that if you are just ping me after the talk. Um, and lastly, I also co-host a pretty embarrassing podcast about open source and technology. Um, it's in Spanish, but maybe if you want to brush up your Spanish, you can give it a go. So. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to the organizers. They're putting up an amazing conference, like giving us an excuse to come to this beautiful beach and just like hang out on the beach, like right there, or the pools and everything. So thank you very much for giving me, you know, the choice, the, the option of being here uh, this afternoon with you. And lastly, I wanted to say that I'm sorry because I'm from Uruguay, really, and uh, I feel kind of wrong giving this talk. Something, okay, sorry. <laughs> I feel kind of wrong giving this talk in, in English because I'm from Uruguay, but the thing is, my Spanish, if I try to do it in Spanish, I'm going to get nervous, I'm going to go too fast, you guys are going to miss what I'm saying, and the Portuguese I know, I mostly learn it from watching Dragon Ball reruns on Brazilian TV, so it's, it's not good enough for this. So English is going to have to cut it for now. So enough about that, I'm, I'm here to talk about simplicity, it's been mentioned before in some talks, and, and that's actually a good sign. It doesn't get mentioned nearly as much as it should, in my opinion. And um, well, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Now, there's a bunch of us here in this beautiful beach, and instead of being over there, like just enjoying ourselves, we're in this room uh, listening to me yap about code and to a lot of other people. Why is that? That's because we as developers are obsessed with quality, and we're obsessed with the quality of our code. And uh, I think that's a very good thing. I, I think that's a very healthy thing. It's been happening since software was a thing. It's been happening for decades now. And, and in a way, we have the definition for good quality software might be hard, but we have a bunch of uh, qualities, a bunch of properties about our software that kind of help us measure if this or that software is good or bad, or if it's better or worse. So we're going to go over a few of these. Uh, so I can get my point across. So first of all, I'm going to talk about its user experience. Now, when I refer to user experience, I'm not talking about like this, having this button there, this button here for end users. I'm talking about user experience for developers. Uh, a library, a gem, has a user experience too. When you're implementing your software around the gem, you need to learn how to use it, and you need to do stuff to make it work. Uh, some gems are better than that than others. Like, we should know about that. Uh, quite a bit because we're using Ruby. Ruby has a lot of emphasis on user experience. That's why everything tries to be so readable, everything tries to be so nice. It's pretty much at the core of the language. And it's a very good quality to have in a piece of software, be it an application or a library. So reliability is important too. Um, the previous talk actually talked about this a lot and also some of the other qualities. When we uh, take a library and, and use it and use it to build around it or on top of it, we're, we're putting a lot of confidence in that because let's say that library works nine out of 10 times, but the 10 times is going to like just crash your server. That's not good at all. You're probably not going to use that library. So reliability is fairly important. Security is important too, particularly you know these days when we have uh, the NSA and Mark Zuckerberg trying to just know what we had for dinner last night. Uh, whenever we choose a library and we put it inside our stack, we're also taking you know, maybe a leap of faith because if that library has a certain vulnerability, then that might mean that all our application is, is going to be exposed with all our information. So that's not good in, in security. It's becoming increasingly more important uh, these days. Maintainability, luckily in the Ruby community, I think we have a little attention to this. Maybe we do more, but we do well enough. We, do, we try to do testing, we do pair programming, we do code review. There's so much we do with it, because mainly because we're lazy and we don't want to have to babysit our code all the time. But it's a good property uh, of software, and so we try to bolster it, which I think is pretty healthy. And finally, performance, which was really looked at in, in, in the previous talk. Now, performance maybe. As Ruby developers, we don't pay much attention to it, or that much attention to it, as we should. Um, 
but it's also pretty important. It can make or or break. Uh, it can make or break a business, like we were hearing just now. Like when, when they went to just like half a second of, of delay on response times, then they started losing clients. So it is pretty important. So all of these things matter a lot to us. And, and that's good. That's, it's really good and it's really healthy that we focus so much on the quality of our software. Um, so why, can I, why do I think simplicity helps here? I've been thinking a lot about simplicity in the last maybe year and a half. Uh, and when I was actually writing this talk, I had a friend who was, I was bouncing ideas of him, and he told me, well, simplicity is kind of a buzzword these days. Everybody is claiming that their software is simple. Everybody says, this is the simplest way to do something, and this my library is really easy to, to use, and it's going to help you achieve everything. Um, and so that kind of makes me hard to define, in a way, because Everyone is dis disagrees very often about what is simple and what isn't. If I, if I put the Rails example, maybe some of you are going to say this is super simple to use, and maybe some of you guys are not going to say that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, of problems. So I had to come up with a definition for what I think simple software is, so I can get my meaning across here to you guys. Now, whenever I mention a friend on a talk, I always feel compelled to put a very embarrassing picture of them for you guys to see. So this is my friend. Uh, he's actually a very nosy guy, but he made me do a lot of work to get this definition. And he was actually right. Um, because how can I talk about simplicity if I can't even define it? Now, it turns out that the definition for this, it, it's, it wasn't trivial. Or at least I couldn't think of any pretty, pretty fast. I had to do a lot of research. I have to think a lot about this. Uh, in order to get a definition that was uh, something that, uh, that I think I could get across. Now, because he made me do so much, so much work, I'm going to show his picture again. I'm also going to give you his Twitter handle so you can poke him on Twitter. Um, but anyway, it turns out simplicity is a lot about perception. None, none of you guys are going to agree about it at the first go. None, uh, if I show you maybe 10, 20, 50 gems, I'm pretty sure you're going, you're going to disagree about half of them, at least, at the very least. Because uh, let's take, for example, this code. This is pretty straightforward code from a Rails controller that does just very little. I took it from a, from a talk I gave earlier on. And probably if I, if I ask you guys about this code, you're all are going to tell me, or most of you are going to tell me that you know what's going on here. But let's say we go outside this hotel, outside this city, whatever. We just go to the street and grab a random person, someone who is not a programmer, someone who doesn't get excited at a Raspberry Pi. If we show them this code, they're going to think it's witchcraft. It's, they're not going to think it's simple at all, even if it sits line of lines of code. So simplicity and complexity is a matter of perception, because it depends on what we have no, on what we know previously from a given problem or from a given library or from you know our experiences. So but actually I kind of brushed past this example very quickly, but let's let's give it another look. Now how many of you please raise your hands if you know what's a, sort of what's happening here on this code? Okay, so there's a lot of hands in there. Now, from those people who just raised their hands, how many of you have ever run this, co this command on your Rails application? There's significantly, significantly less hands there. Now, what this does is this is going to show you all the rack uh, middleware stack on your Rails application. Um, do you know, does anybody know here how many uh, rack middlewares we have in a brand new Rails application? I don't think it's 7 million, but it's pretty high. This um, is a chart that shows the, the stack, the rack middleware for a brand new Rails application. Now, we can't even see that because it's so big. Like, we need maybe one, two, three, four. We need five slides, and like, still some of it, it's out of it. This, all these components are being activated and are uh, processing each request that gets to your application. So, whenever you're looking at this code, uh, you're looking at the tip of the iceberg because what I was mentioning before is even only the rack middleware, the, the rack middleware stack. There's a lot of more code in Rails that's powering just these six lines of code that we're seeing. And if we think about it, that's, this, this can't be simple at all because there's maybe 40,000 lines of code in Rails. I don't know. I, I, I'm actually not sure, but there's a lot of code in there. So the complexity is there. It's hidden and you can't see it straight away, 
but it's there. It's like taking a bunch of crap and just putting it under the carpet and hope you never ever have to move it. And that doesn't make it simple. That just makes it it's apparently simple to a given set of problems. Now, what happens if something breaks? What happens if maybe you have your application for three years and in the fourth year you're implementing something that needs to analyze a very specific part of the request and you find that in that request, that part, it, it's not reaching the application for whatever reason. You're going to have to debug the whole thing. You're going to have to debug the, the rack middleware stack or what if something else breaks in Rails? You're going to have to debug probably a bunch of those Rails files, a bunch of those 40,000 lines of code. You're not going to have a good time at all. You're going to suffer through it. It's going to take you a long time. All your friends are going to mock you. Uh, it's, it's not going to go well for you. <laughs> but anyway, we still need a definition. We've been like shooting them one by one. Uh, and this is kind of the same process I did when I was thinking about it. Like something that appears simple is not necessarily simple. So what did I do? I wasn't getting anywhere with this line of thinking, thinking about what simplicity was. So what does everybody developer do when they're like in a dead end and they just can't make progress? We cheat. So I said, I'm going to cheat. Don't laugh. Like, you know, this, we all do this stuff. Uh, it's part of our job. But what I said is that I, I asked myself this question. When does complexity matter? When does simplicity and complexity actually matter on a stack? Because maybe if we were using that uh, controller from before, our lives are going to be happier for a long time because we don't have any problem that you know, breaks that particular use case. But when does, it, when does complexity matter then? It matters when we need to confront it. It matters when something breaks and you have to dig through all the garbage that you put in there without even knowing that it was there. Uh, and then you have to like, spend days and weeks or, or you know, a lot of time and frustration to find a problem because it's like finding a needle on a haystack. So when I was thinking about the whole thing, I, I've been, the, the past few years, I've been thinking about the Unix philosophy and that helps a little bit because it tells you, you know, you have to have small components that do one thing well. And that sort of helped a little bit, but sometimes it can be vague. And I needed something more down to earth, something that I could just read and know what I was looking at and it could, and it could help me and maybe others make decisions when you're working on your software. So this is the uh, definition that I sort of got to that I think applies good enough, like well enough for this problem. Something is simple to me when it can be understood quickly. Now, I'm not talking about the six lines of code that we saw. I'm saying that you should be able to understand the whole stack. And maybe that includes the 40,000 lines, 40, lines of code. So when I was coming to this realization and thinking this is really helpful for my code, uh, I found that I couldn't get that all the whole stack in my head if it was Rails and it had like, I don't know how many uh, thousands of lines of code. So I said my stack should be smaller. If my stack is smaller, then I'm going to, have, I'm going to be able to fit it all in my head easier. And I'm going to know a lot more about my application than I would if I only understood those six lines of code that we saw, looked at. So, you might be thinking, like, how does this change anything? Like, how does this help us in, improve the quality of our code? Yes, we saw the definition of quality in code that we can probably agree on. Then we saw my sort of right up patchwork definition of what simple software is. Um, but, you know, what about all these problems? What about the issues? What about all these um, points of quality that we need to improve because after all, everything we're doing is because we want more quality in our software. So how does this help? We're going to look at a few examples um, just to get a feel of that. Now, when I asked about in Twitter about a horrible user experience in Ruby, pretty much everyone pointed to net HTTP, which I don't know if you guys have used manually ever, but it's pretty horrible. So if, go, if we go through all these lines of code, in the first one, we're calling some random constant. We're not even calling uh, any sort of method on it. We're just like constant. Here's a string with a URL. Then we're defining uh, a hash dictionary with some options. And we're calling another method on that constant again and assigning it to the magic object we had before, which we don't really know what it does. But you know, it's there. Uh, and then finally, over there in the line that's separate, we call net HTTP get response and pass this magic object to it, and we can use it. You, you know, like we can save that response on a variable and it has a body. If we want to know if it was successful or not, it, 
we can check the class, and it sort of tells us because it's an HTTP success. So that's kind of horrible, really. Uh, here's another example. And I'm sorry, this is Python, but I'm not trying to troll anybody. Um, but here, we're just defining a dictionary with some stuff. And then we're calling requests.get, and we're passing the URL we want to make the HTTP request to. And we're also just assigning to a name variable called params. We're passing this payload that we defined a few lines bef a line before. And that's all we need to do. We can save that there. And if we know, if you want to know if it was successful or not, we can just call the status code. And it will be something familiar, something we can understand. Now, if you look at this previous example, we're interacting with three, with three constants and calling random stuff in it that doesn't really tell us much. It's just encode www form, it could do a lot of things. Like get response is sort of understandable, but the first one is completely impossible to understand. In the second one, you're just calling one method on one module, and it sort of tells you everything you need to know. This is intuitive. Intuitive is just another word for understandable, really. It's something simple to understand. If you look at that code, you can just hold it in your mind because very easily because it's pretty easy to grasp, and you can do it quickly. So yeah, Python. That slide shouldn't be there. <laughs> but the troll. <laughs> Um, so anyway, let's talk about reliability, which was the next good quality we wanted to have in our software. Now, let's be very good to all of us and assume that if we have 100 features in our library, we're only going to uh, put one bug, statistically, right? Um, we probably do a lot worse than this. For, you know, I know I do. Um, but it stands to reason that the more features we have and the more features our stack does, then the more bugs they're going to have, statistically. Um, and conversely, if we have less features, if a stack is doing less things, then it's going to have less bugs. And that's good because a smaller stack should have less bugs, and you know, that's good for us, but we can't kill, you know, we can't kill ourselves. Bugs are unavoidable and will always be there. The good part about this is not only having less bugs, but when you do have bugs, it's going to be far easier to find them because you're going to have all the stack in your mind and when, whenever you start like, chasing that bug, it's going to be painfully obvious where it is because it's far easier to debug maybe 600 lines of code than 40,000. So we could say by, the, by this definition of simple that simple software should be more reliable. Now security, let's talk about security a little bit. We could almost reuse the same slides. Uh, more, instead of bugs, we can just talk about vulnerabilities because they're, like, vulnerabilities are a subset of, of bugs, really. Um, and so it stands to reason that if our software is trying to do more stuff, it's going to introduce more security vulnerabilities. Uh, and Rails is the perfect example for this, right? I mean, how many security vulnerabilities have we found this year? How many will be found? And there's a lot of really smart people on the, Ruby, uh, on the Rails core team, but no matter how many people we throw at this problem, it's always going to keep having bugs and keep having new bugs because it has so much stuff in it that it's statistically impossible for it to be free of error and free of vulnerabilities. It's just, you know, there's no way it could happen. Maintainability. It's maintainability we could be defined as a cycle of understanding the code that is there and just rewriting it to suit the new needs that you have uh, for a given project, for every, like whatever business reason you have. And this is pretty straightforward to grasp, right? If, if we cut in half, if we make understanding easier, then uh, our stack is going to be simpler to maintain because half of that work is going to be made like, dramatically easier for us. Uh, performance, it's also pretty straightforward to grasp, right? If we have our library doing one thing or ten things, uh, it's going to take some time to do them. But if our library is going to start doing more and more and more things throughout the stack, then it's going, it stands to reason that it's going to take more time to do it, generally. So that's good. Our smaller stack should uh, make our application perform more, but what's even more important than that is the same as the previous example. It's going to be simpler to find bottlenecks because when something goes slowly, you can just start thinking about what's going on and looking at the code and looking at the code of your framework or your toolkit or whatever it is you're using, and you're going to get it pretty quickly. You're going to understand it and you're going to find really easily um, why it's going slowly. So I think 
all of these problems, whenever we have problems in all of these um, points of attributes that we have defined as quality points on our software, whenever we have problems there, most of the time, those are symptoms of added complexity in our code base that maybe doesn't need to be there. And, and so what do we do? What, what have we been doing for a long time? We attack those symptoms. We try to make our software, act, we actively try to make our software more performant and more reliable and, and more maintainable. But we're kind of putting, you know, the, the, we're, we're kind of attacking the symptoms and putting the horse before the cart where it should be the other way around, right? If we strive to instead just focus on quality, if we focus on reducing the complexity of our code base, and make it simpler, then by this very definition, we're going to make a lot of improvements into all the other quality points of our application just by doing it indirectly. Instead of just directly attacking that problem, attacking the root problem of all of them, or something that can at least make all of those better. So whenever we strive for simplicity, whenever we actively try to keep our stack small and, and you know, just to the point and free of bugs and the all the stuff we've been talking about, then everything else, everything, every point in quality is going to improve naturally. So I've been thinking about all of this for some time, maybe like a year and a half or something. It started when I started using a lot of libraries that were new to me. Some of them were made by, by Soren, Michel Martens, who is uh, going to be talking here later today. And you know, we should, I'm definitely going to be here, like I want to see that talk very much. Because this made me think a lot about simplicity and made me change the way I think and the way I approach software. Uh, and now, I've been talking about simplicity as it was something simple to achieve, like so just something really quickly. We can so just go out that door and we can say, well, all our software is going to be simple now, problem solved, like everything is going to be all right, you know, like we're not going to have as many bugs, everything is going to be simple to, to find. But that's not the truth, because it's actually much more subtle than that. And why is that? It's because Every feature we add to a library or an application has some level of complexity to it that is not going to go away even if you make it as to the point as possible. Every problem that you solve has some complexity associated to it. So when I started thinking in this frame of mind, I noticed that I was all the time thinking about the trade-off it implied. I've turned down a lot of pull requests on some of my open source projects because maybe those pull requests m put features in there that were super, excuse me, <laughs> that were super useful, right? Some of those are super useful indeed. But for example, in one case, I had a library that was maybe 40 lines of code, and it m got, got the problem solved. And this guy sent a pull request, which gave me a new feature, which was actually pretty useful. But the code base was uh, twice as big of the whole project, just for one feature. So you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it? Because all of those extra lines of codes are code you're going to have to maintain, are codes that could control, that could bring problems, that could bring performance issues, that could bring anything. So is that particular feature really worth all this complexity? It's, a lot of times it's not as simple to answer this as I would like. I have to ask so many friends for advice whenever I get a pull request now because Maybe initially I will say, yeah, this is useful or, or this isn't, but that's not my only concern now. So what I want to tell you, what the message I want to leave for you is not what stack to use. I don't want to tell you to stop using Rails. I don't want to tell you to use Sinatra or Cuba or any other framework or to use Python or to use Lua. What I want to tell you is that whenever, when, when I change my frame of mind to think about it in this way, first of all, I get a lot of peace of mind and it helped me a lot of, in the quality of my software. But most of all, what changed dramatically was that every time I did something to my code, it was a conscious choice. I was actively thinking about the complexity I was adding to whatever system I was working in and you know, the problems that could come from that complexity. So I don't want you guys to change your stack if you don't want to, but I do want you to think a little bit, every time you make a choice of this, not only in, is this feature useful, but is the code that I'm adding going to be a problem to maintain or can introduce problems? And that's going to give you a lot of peace of mind too, I think. So this is what I, what I want, the message I want to leave for you guys. Think about simplicity and think about how it can help you solve your problems and how it, 
it can help you understand more about your application. The more layers you understand about your application, the more power you're going to have over it. And the less you know, horrible, sweaty moments fixing a production server you're going to, you're going to spend. So this is the message I wanted to bring you guys. And I thank you so much for your time. Um, do I have any questions from the audience? And there was silence. <laughs> okay, this actually, I'm, I'm kind of used to this because this is a kind of talk where you don't really have a question right away. It's the kind of talk that is abstract and weird. And when you have to like mull it over for a second, I'm going to be here at the conference for the rest of the day. If you guys want to ping me and tell me how am I wrong about everything, please do so. I'm fine. Like, if you want to shut down my definition of simplicity, I might be a little bit let down because I'm going to have to do this thinking all over again. But it's going to help me because I'm going to find something wrong with my thinking. So thank you so much for having me here. And <laughs> stop it. And I forgot to say, there were some resources there that uh, you might find useful from this conference, from this talk. Yes, more, more clapping, I like that. <laughs>